Hello everyone and welcome along to part 14 it's getting along in it part 14 of making this slightly larger than miniature it's a miss engine uh, as it's developing it it's growing it's actually the base is about a foot long which is you know uh, exactly what I wanted really um, so in this part we've got the side cheeks made uh, but I wanted to stiffen the structure up a little bit and I wanted to make sure there were plenty of fixings into the main cylinder body because this engine um, I know a lot of the models that you can buy, the small ones, the kits I think they're about between 5 and 6cc I'm not sure, don't quote me on that but they're around 5 or 6cc roughly um, and the you know, they're dinky and they look lovely and they're fantastic but that's not what I wanted, I wanted something a little bit bigger and as I've already said in previous episodes that um, you can buy them from America, I'm not sure about over here uh, but $648 I think it was for one particular one that they did um, and then you've got import duty and, and uh, VAT and all the rest of the crap that goes with it. So I wasn't even going to go there, but I didn't want that anyway. I wanted to make my own. You know, that was my plan. Um, so I hope you like this part. I'm not going to harp on for too long, but we'll cover whatever I can in this part. It, it all depends on the minutes of the videos because some of these videos get quite long and I have to really, really chop them down without cutting too much content out because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. And I know that a lot of you enjoy watching all the machining that goes on as opposed to just saying look what I've done um, so we'll get on with it and let's just see how far we get okay thanks for watching so far on the first 13 parts right left just use my little draper engraver I'm sure they both fit the same way but you not the way really is it Packets of screws, M5. Actually, I didn't think this was bad. It come to eleven pound for a lot, so I don't need anything like that for this. But for stock, really, they're thirty mil. They're longer. Some little stubby, ten mil or fifteen, and some quite long ones, which I thought might come in handy at some point. I've got lots of M6, but I don't have a lot of them M5, so the reason for getting them. been okay that's top dead center flush with the front reality check you can see that 8.4 Try that again because I didn't get 8.4 last time. You know, I'm getting a different measurement every time. I think what I'm going to have to do is get the proper thing for doing the job out. <coughs> I'll 
proper depth gauge. Compression them, won't it? Yeah, so th we have 32 divided by 6 for 5 po points, 5 parts piston movement, 1 part compressed air pocket. It's 5.33, and I've got 6.3, which means the compression will be lower, which is probably going to be better. Because they say four and a half to one. So I need to get this marked out for fixing. And as I said, I've got to be careful here with crank, not catching on the sides. So I need to get a dimension of that so I can transfer that parallel dimension onto this. So right i'll come back when i've got this packed i'm going to open these up somehow i don't fancy just sitting with a file i'll come back because this has been running for over 45 minutes now i'm going to need editing down obviously Nice little job of that. I don't want to come in too far because it marks the work at this side. I think that'll do.
here, let's have a look at it. So, we've now got a mark on there. Oh, it's just crap. We've got that radius now on there. I just thought it might look a bit nicer um, with that on. So basically what we've got now is that's going to be like that. As you can see what my idea is that it just lessens it the aggression of a, a, a square corner as such. Uh, have I got, no I've got it wrong way around haven't I? That'll be like there. Well, you see where it's going to be because I've marked it, my lines. And I've popped four holes at top for the teapot lid to go on when I make it. So I just thought I'd do that first. I'll drill those four to take M5, 4.2, um, and just leave it for now and make a lid later. And then I've got to concentrate on these holes. Now, these holes. I've got to be very careful because there's a water jacket in here uh, and it's near the front is the slot so my depth of the two front screws can only be 10 millimetre deep I'd like to say 9 millimetre deep and then plug tap uh, the M5 the back two it doesn't really matter because we've got all this meat at the back so we can sort of go to I hope I'm holding this high enough ah yeah I can see yeah, so um, these back two don't matter. And then the cross one, that'll have to be no more than the depth of this. I don't want to hit the cast iron. And then there'll be one at the front, and that'll have to be very shallow, maybe nine. So in all, there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six fixings holding that to this framework. So I'm pretty confident that should be okay. Right, we'll knock off at that and come back when we're doing some more. Right, guys, I've been doing a bit off camera. Um, these two blocks here that I'm making, but to fit in between these cheeks, just to sort of give it some support. So basically there'll be one here and one further back at the back of the cylinder, and they'll drill through and fix into the cylinder, probably a single bolt through here and here to hold them together. So I've squared up three sides. They're going to be uh, 30.67, but 30.65-ish. Uh, I'm only working to a line. So I've done three sides and cleaned them up. I'm just doing the last side now. I thought I'd better just show a bit of it in case you tell me off. Now, these were a bit of an afterthought, really. Although everything's a, an afterthought, what I'm doing, but... Uh, <coughs> and the idea was I just thought an extra fixing through the base that went right through and into the um, cylinder and then a couple into the sides of the cheeks. It just makes like... Should we call it a monocoque? 
you know, as opposed to just two parallel sides, like two chassis rails, we're going to have four as such, and it'll it'll create a, a monocoque box. So that might stiffen things up. I was just worried. I mean, this thing is on a low compression, but it is 16 cc. I think I worked it out at 16.1 cc. So every time this thing fires, it's going to have a fair old bit of shock on it, which is another thing I've got to look at is the flywheels because uh, I need to make sure that those flywheels are fixed to those shafts otherwise they're going to go spinning off right I've just pieced it together loosely so you've got an idea um, I, these are M5 bolts I can't see put my screen up Yeah, I've got these M5 bolts, uh, which are going to be to drill from the underneath of this aluminium base that I'm going to use. This is 20 millimetre thick, and it's a piece of aluminium over from a job. And I might have mentioned it before in a previous episode. I have no idea where it came from. I did a job. I made a job. I made something, and I can't remember for the life of me what it was that I made. Uh, and I bought this piece of aluminium. It was much longer and it was cheaper to buy it as a longer piece and that was what were left over uh, however I digress that's going to be the base so I'm going to drill and counterbar from the underneath of this base all the way through the cheeks including those two pads I've just made up through and into the bottom of that so that you can see now we've created that little monocoque I can do this without knocking everything over that sits there like that okay okay so the two little square blocks I made I've milled the corners out of them there and there and you can see in there um, and it's just a, a thought that you know, spark plug lead maybe, one or other, and a fuel lead from, you know, from back here somewhere could run down the centre and through through there. So uh, I might never use them, but they're there. I've loosely clamped this in, and it's not that brilliant actually. I need to tap it around some more. Uh, but what I have noticed is, although that's nearly flush there. And that isn't it's it's proud right so i've managed to uh, fix the two blocks in there as you can see this one's riding a little bit high so i am going to run my lint cutter over top of that i'm going to do it with a fly cutter or an insert cutter um the, the whole th this one and the other side and they came really close to the edge when I counterboard them so I don't have a counterbar set um, so what I do is I drill the hole then I counterbar it with a milling cutter so what I've been on with uh, today is um, drilling the holes to accept this body and to clamp all the lot together and drill all the way through is probably a bit of a no-no. It'd have taken a, a, a lot of setting up. So I decided uh, to drill the framework first. I can transfer that over onto the, the big base and I can bore that through easily by just using either a dowel pin or this drill to follow through. And then I've got to then transfer those holes into here at 4.2 to tap for the M5 bolts so I've already drilled quite a few of the holes um, as I said before one of these uh, dividers I put in was sat a bit high so today I've run a milling cutter over so they're all flat so the body sits nice and flat on it the cylinder so I'm, uh, I've done some zeroing on the DRO etc um, and I've just come back to my zero, so the hole to drill here, and then I'll wind to there. Now, I'm not centering with a center finder on this 10 millimeter alley plate. I'm eyeballing it. Okay, I'm just doing it from 
experience of drilling holes all my life. It just rather than um, using centre finder, I've, I'm just eyeballing it. Uh, but I have used the DRO for the distance, so these two holes I'm doing will be the same as the two at that end. They want deburring. So, as I said before, that's going to be now held with six fixings. So, I, ca I can't see we'll have a problem. Chips, it's not winding up in a great big spiral. So that's where the two fixings are going to be to hold this framework and I've marked it out onto this base plate and I'm just going to drill them through. Just a little uh, snippet to show you about um, when you're drilling aluminium and this is a fairly sharp drill um, it's not as bad as brass, I mean brass grabs but aluminium don't grab so much but you see that cutting edge isn't bad this is a drill I used when I was doing the aluminium body of the little engine and can you see that flute there it's bunged up and what happens is that bungs up and then you carry on drilling and you're thinking it's getting harder to drill is this uh, and in actual fact it's not getting harder technically it's bunged up and sometimes you have to give my mouth quite a flick to, there we go got it out uh, you won't even see it's so small this piece but that, yeah, that, that's cleaned up now. That's okay. But, yeah, keep an eye on it when you're drilling aluminium. They pick up and you don't realise they've done it. Right, as you can see, um, I had to do another fixture. This is just a piece of what we're over from the Bridgeport um, Z-axis drive, which were an X-axis drive for a Bridgeport. And that was a part that came with it. It's supposed to go on end of, end of the Miller machine bed. Uh, and I found that 
worked on there. So what I've done is I've squared this up with a square off the bed and let's make sure we can see everything. You have squared up from the bed of this, so this body's square, then I've squared this up with the milling grooves, with the T-nut slots, and hopefully we've left one, two, three holes that I can see through the, to get to. So idea, to lower the bed down, put a five mil drill in here and line these up one, one at a time. So I'll put a five mil in there, get it dead central and then run through with a 4.2. I must be careful because uh, this back one, yeah, these, these two here don't matter how deep I go. So I might go down like 15 millimeter. This one I'll be careful not to go any deeper than the cylinder liner because I don't want to hit the cast iron. Not that it matters, but I certainly don't want to drill through it. So that uh, might need to be a bit shallower. <clears throat> 10, 15, it's 16. So when I hit the bottom of that and take a zero, I want to be going down maybe 14 if that. So that's basically what we're up to. Once I've done that and drilled and tapped those three holes, I'll put screws in and tighten them up and then I can get to the other two, which this will be then fixed to and I can do the rest of it in the vise. That's the plan. I'll come back when I've got ready and got set up. Okay, so you see that, all right. I've gone through with a, a five milli to get my line up. So I know that were a, a perfect fit. I've taken that out and put the 4.2 in for tapping. I've taken it right down through till it's touching. And I've set a zero on this fourth DRO up here. On this particular one, I'm going to plunge down probably 15 millimeter and the back one. I've just got enough room in here to do that. And the battery cut out, so if I had to put the trusty battery pack on, as I said to you, it doesn't last long. It was a fully charged battery. I've got three batteries, but they're a pain in the butt to change, because you've got to take the base off the bottom of the camera. Right. Let's undo it all. I'm going to run tap straight down, but I don't think it's a good idea. Before we start, let's... I'm getting a bit of health and safety in here. I'll just take that drill bit out. They're so sharp at end, you know, could cause you a nasty cut. So we'll remove it. As you can see, the fixture that I made, concocted I'd say, not made, it's simple enough. I'll show you the, the part. So it appears never to throw away, I guess. So that's part that come with the bridge part, and it's to fit on the far end, I believe, and it's something to do with you doing this motor drive. But it, it came in handy. So don't throw things away. Um, don't need that anymore. Or that.
as you'll know taps come in three sets of three you've got your starter tap which has got the thread cut away quite a way up it so you can get a good start then you've got the middle number two which is slightly coarser and then number three your plug tap which is threaded all the way down I'm only using number one and number three simply because I'm only cutting into aluminium if I were cutting into steel I'd use all the three otherwise you risk probably breaking the tap there we go you can feel when it gets to the bottom so not push it any further right so I've loosely bolted it on by three bolts they're not tight they're just nipped uh, clean bottom off and that's lined up fairly well that's not bad it's as good as I'd expect seems to have got it parallel so my next job would be to hold this in here like so nip it up in a bit and do exactly the same again Right, well the uh, counter balls have come I only ordered them two days ago uh, They look quite nice actually um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it but they're, en they're engraved if you can see that all stamped it's sort of machined in it's not just etched so I can't see that that would wear off really good that's the large one the m12 so we've got m12 m10 m8 m6 m5 m4 and right down to a little dinky m3 yeah really pleased so i can actually um do the counter boring now and it's um five so uh, how much were they i think they were 19 pound plus that for the full set if you look for just one they're like five pound odd each but if you went for the full set i think with the vat it were 23.99 free delivery two day postage and sure enough it came two days so so we'll look at the one we're going to use yep that's tight so I'm not going to go in there so I'm going to struggle yeah it's showing it as 5.2 8.9 I'm going to have to open these holes all up to 5.2 or as near as I can I don't think I'll have a 5.2 I might have an imperial Five point five millimeter. That's the depth I've gone. So it's just below the surface. That's good enough. That's what I want. I'm running at three hundred and eighty RPM. As you'll see this setup is not ideal. Got one of the old V blocks that I did up. Part of the holding down kit, the long finger, the long rod, all the, nearly the longest rod. Packings under here. I've had my level box on the vice and on the bed and on here, and it's now bang on. And I'm about to plunge 
four holes for the body for the M5 threads so I'll come back when I've got that done all I'm doing is drilling holes you've seen me doing all that uh, and then I'll take this bed off again so that I can get in with a tap unless I can reach with a tap to tap it because this uh, cylinder is now fixed on here and that's all hunky dory as such ok yeah. we'll come back when we've got some more done but uh, there's not a lot to show at the moment ok so we've managed to um, get it all bolted together as you can see all drilled and counterboard screws are all in and tightened but they're not tight and tightened because all this will have to come off again um, again I don't know whether I'm going to try and beautify this base up by radiusing it all the way around and then making a, a nice oak or mahogany stand for it to go on and all the gubbins inside it uh, but so far very good, I'm really pleased everything fit some of the screws were a bit awkward to get in um, you know, or obviously not to the thou but they've all gone in so start to see it in its glory there's no point in putting the crank in yet and bolting it down I've got to decide now what's next I've got a teapot lid to make for this yet but I need a block of aluminium and I'll have to look around I think originally we're going to slice a piece of this off and use that but I might leave that like that because it might be something like a fuel tank or so something on back here so I might just leave that for now and then I've got to decide like I said before whether I've got to cut some of this away for the flywheel so I don't catch my fingers when I start it <laughs> if it ever starts that is but everything lines up so I'm very pleased and you know, once I got that um, uh, counter bar, it's just a doddle with a counter bar. Although I had to drill the holes out slightly bigger because I'd done them five mil, and that five mil counter bar needs a five point two hole, so I tore them out. I think I ended up using an imperial. Anyway, we're all done. So uh, that's as far as we've gone on. I think that'll be the end of part 14 and I'll publish this because there's an awful lot to show so I'll get that published and then decide what I'm going to do in part 15 okay uh, I won't do a, an end bit I'll just say thanks for watching guys hope it's of interest to somebody who wants to maybe make one on the cheap it hasn't cost a fortune so far but you know you keep buying things like these and I only needed one particular one but I bought a set because it would have not to and I've got them now on top for future um, all the little Allen screws that I bought packets of them I think did I say £11 some it come to but I've got tons and tons of them over in bags that I'm never going to use on this job ok thanks for watching Give us a like, thumbs up, maybe comment, so know what you think. Thank you.